Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial for Motion Matching for Unity. In this tutorial, we're going to go over a new feature to Motion Matching for Unity, which is the Curve System. This is new to version 2.2.9, which will be coming out very shortly, if not already out by the time you see this video. So usually with Unity Animation Curves, you can actually create your own custom curves inside the animation import settings. You can give them names, you can edit the curves, etc. Now, unfortunately, this curve system from Unity is tied directly to Mechanim to drive Mechanim properties. These curves cannot be accessed at runtime, and therefore they're not exactly very useful for anything but Mechanim. Thank you, Unity. So what I've done now is I've added in a new curve system inside M MXM, so it has its own curve system that we can extract curve values at runtime to do whatever we want with it, um, drive animation, drive whatever. So basically what we need to do is when we go to our animation module, so I'll just show you here, so we open up an animation, let's open up that one that has some curves on already, and we can just go to the curves mode. So this is our typical mode for tags, our tagging timeline. We just go to curves and we can create a new curve, we click on the name we can name it my curve we can uh, you know add a key in the middle and if we click on it we can edit it just like we can with the uh, you know curves in the uh, animation import settings we can you know add another key there add another key there and you can see those keys will all show up and we can edit them as we desire uh, we could also just add the keys and edit the keys in here in the actual editor itself. This just helps with getting the timing right. Um, but yeah, otherwise it's pretty much identical to what Unity has done with its own custom animation curves. The difference is we can use this with motion matching for Unity. Uh, we can see the value of the curve in this little box here at whatever time the uh, playhead is at. And we can also delete the curve. I'm gonna click cancel on that one. And we can also navigate between the keys on the curve with these forward and back buttons. Okay, so let's hit clear. Now, there are some animation curves on the imported animations already, and this might be the case for a lot of existing projects. So I've added some options to extract these. Now, these curves can only be extracted in editor, uh, but not at runtime. So we're gonna make use of that, and I'm gonna hit extract. And you can see my curve, your cur curve, and everyone's curve from the animation that we were looking at before have now been extracted into here. Now, there are a few caveats here. The naming of the curve is very important. You cannot have spaces and you cannot have full stops in the name. Um, this is to filter out the humanoid animation curves. Uh, unfortunately, it's not possible to simply ask for the custom curves that the user added. Um, it's only uh, I'm only able to ask with the editor utility for all the float curves. So this is the only way I've been able to find to distinguish them um, from other float curves. So yeah, that is basically it. No full stops, no spaces in your curve names here. There is another way to do, to do it. So uh, if I clear this, if I simply create a new curve and call it say my curve, um, I can click update. And what it's going to do is it's going to search the imported animation for a float curve called my curve. And if it finds it, it's going to set the curve up to be exactly like that. So that's really nice. We can either extract all of the curves without spaces and, and full stops, or we can just add them and update them. Alternatively, uh, you could use this update to just undo kind of all your changes. If you were messing around with it and you wanted to, to go back to whatever was on the imported animation, you can just hit update again and it'll snap back. So that is how we create curves. Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, you can add as many as you like. And when we pre-process it, it's all gonna get baked into the anim data so that we can access it at runtime. Let's now move on to see how we can access the values of the curves that are running on the current animation at runtime. Okay, so before we actually write the code, let's just add some curves to our neutral, like our run cycle animation. So that's just running straight. Uh, the only reason I want to do this for the sake of testing this is because I can consistently reproduce a running straight animation in a loop so we can actually check if the curves are working properly. I don't want to go add curves to every single animation. That'll take a while. You'll probably want to do that for your game depending on the gameplay. But let's add two new curves to this animation. And this is just going to be test curve one. And this one will be test curve two. 
All right, so test curve one, I'm just gonna make it very simple. It's gonna start at uh, 0 0.5 and it's gonna go up to, oh, what I do there? Okay, whoops, I made a mistake here. So this will go up to 0 0.5. And this will go up to one. Okay, and then we'll add, I'll re-add that curve that I accidentally undid. Test curve two, and this is gonna be the opposite. So it'll start at one and I've done it again. And it'll go to 0 0.5. Let's readjust this again at one. So I basically made them opposite so I can easily distinguish them. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the example demo script and just print out the values of these curves, test curve one and test curve two. Um, I'm going to print them out to Squiggle, which is an external paid plugin. Don't worry about it. This is just for debugging that I often use. Uh, it's similar to debug log, but instead of, you know, logging to the console, just heaps of he heaps of numbers, it logs a graph. Uh, so I can actually see the values. So yeah, don't worry about it. It's just to show that we are actually getting the right curve values. So let's go to the code. And that is, I'm just going to do this in the example demo script um, update. So edit. There we are. And I'm just gonna do it here. So debug uh, graph. So you would usually do debug.log, uh, but since I'm using Squiggle, I've got debug graph.log. And I'm gonna say test curve one. And then, so for the value, I'm gonna go M. This is how we access the curve. M, MXM animator dot uh, get curve value. Now we can either get it from our value uh, from the name of the curve or the handle. The handle is more efficient, but I'm just gonna get it from the curve first, just to show you test curve one. So it's got to be the exact same name. If it's not exact, it won't work. E curve blend type. So this is to kind of, is kind of a performance thing or, or what animations do you want to extract the curve from? So there's four options. You got chosen, dominant, dominant and chosen and all. So basically if it's chosen, it's going to extract the curve from the chosen animation that's been recently chosen by motion matching. The dominant is the animation with the most weight. Uh, so that might be a good option. You could use dominant and chosen and then blend the two together. Most of the time, this is gonna get you probably pretty good results. And the final one is from every single animation and then it'll blend the curve value by weight. Now this is the least performant uh, and the performance is different depending how many motion matching slots you have and how many are active. Uh, so, I mean, it probably most of the time you're, you're probably fine just going with one of these two. Um, but yeah, that is an option there if you want, but I'm gonna go with chosen. Now I'm just gonna copy this and do one for debug graph, uh, for test curve two. Okay, now let's go back uh, here. The only thing I need to do is I need to re-preprocess my motion data because of course it's not going to come through otherwise. So I'll just pre-process that. Okay, we'll pre-process. All right, so now I'm gonna hit play. And as I run just straight, those curves should start showing up and there they are. And you can see it's exactly as we expected. Let's we'll hit pause. So test curve one, the value goes up from 0 0.5 to one and then it loops. You can see this is where um, the animation is looping and it keeps doing that and test curve two is the opposite. So the curve values are coming out perfectly fine, which is really good. And that's why I like to use squiggle. I can easily see these values. Now you can use uh, this kind of information to do a lot of different things. Um, it's really up to you. Animation curves, custom animation curves can be used in so many different ways. It's meant to be a generic system that you use for yourself. I'm gonna show you a quick example of something you, I guess you could do with it. Let's uh, change the speed of the animation based on the value of test curve one. Now, I'm just going to take this out and put it here and make it a float. Float, uh, so I'm just gonna say anim speed test equals that. And I'll put this back in the log so we can, we can see it. And here I'm just gonna say m mxm animator dot um, set animation, uh, what is it, sorry. It's uh, playback, playback speed equals anim speed test. Now I'm only gonna do it uh, if the value is over 0 0.5 and the, and the reason for this is that 
I've got a whole bunch of other animations that don't have any curves on them. And if we set the animation speed to zero, which is the default, if you don't, if there's no curve on an animation, it's going to return zero, then we're going to get locked into something. So, um, so if anim speed test is greater than, let's say 0 0.49, then we are going to change the playback speed. All right, let's see how that turns out. It's going to look a really bit a bit weird because it's going to go from half speed to full speed and then just keep looping but it's just a really quick and dirty example that i wanted to show show you so there we go slow fast slow fast and you know it's actually affecting um the motion so let's because obviously the path trajectory so i'm going to go to the mxm animator and now whenever you affect things like speed or you do procedural rotation or animation you need to turn on one of these options in here so it's the past trajectory mode uh, instead of actual history copy from current because it's going to be a mismatch with your data if you're modifying how the character moves so i really recommend using copy from uh, sorry uh, past trajectory mode copy from current pose whenever you're doing that or even if you have custom movement and not root motion so let's do this all right so slow fast slow fast slow fast so there you go there is a way to uh, control animation speed with your uh, movement. Now, obviously, I've gone out of the run straight. And I'm doing these strafes, and and therefore I'm getting zero, so it's not getting updated. But if I go straight, there we go. The curve values are being picked up, and it's changing the speed. Cool. So there's a very uh, simple application of of the system. You can change the speed at runtime. Plenty of other things you can do. You could have curves for, you know, when the feet touch the ground and then you might ha have like foot locking, for example. Um, lots and lots of things you can do with that. Now, before I finish up, there's just one more thing I want to do. And that is get rid of this because this is going to cause garbage collection because we're creating a string. Uh, we're allocating to the stack. I mean, the heap. Sorry. Uh, so we need to actually fix this. And the way that I like to do it is to use handles. I use handles for everything and they're all just basic integers. So let's go test curve one handle. Now keep in mind, you would probably cache this in your actual class instead of locally because locally you're gonna be, um, you're gonna be doing the same work anyway, but I'm just showing you this for demonstration. So we can get this MXM animator dot get uh, curve handle. And then we go test curve one, and that is that. And instead of passing in this here, we can go test curve one handle, uh, and we just get that there. Now, need to spell it correctly, of course. Now, yeah, of course, as I mentioned, you would probably put this in start, um, and you'd cache the value. But again, this is just for demonstration purposes. This is how you get a handle. Uh, do with it what you will. Let's quickly test that, make sure that that handle is working. Okay, running, and there we go. We can see um, here that the curve is being extracted still, and it's not going to allocate garbage, and it doesn't have to do a big search on like on that string. It just goes straight to that uh, um, the handle index on the map. So there we go. That is the new feature for curves. Now keep in mind, uh, this is the first iteration of the curve system with MXM. It only operates on the base MXM layer. It doesn't operate on um, uh, different layers. So if you're using the MXM layer system or event layers, it's not going to be able to extract curves from that yet. That might come in a future uh, update, but for now it's just for the base locomotion, the base layer. So thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope this is useful for you. I will see you next time.